I was living a really expensive lifestyle. I was making good money, like I said, but because of this lifestyle creep and my expensive ass apartment, I was living paycheck to paycheck. Guys, I feel that that is so pathetic to live paycheck to paycheck on a $65,000 salary, not because of any right, like real reason, not because I have a kid that I'm supporting, not because of anything, but just because I was being materialistic and greedy and experiencing lifestyle creep. There are people who support a family on less money than that. And I was barely able to just take care of myself on that salary. That's embarrassing. Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about lifestyle creep and what to do when you get a raise or a salary increase. So I am going to be sharing with you guys my story, my own personal experience with lifestyle creep, as well as giving you guys some tips on how to avoid it so you can stay on a healthy personal finance journey. If you're new to my channel, what's up? My name is Zoe, I'm 24, I live in Montreal and I work as a software consultant. You should totally subscribe. And whether or not you're new, please give this video a thumbs up because it helps the algorithm, supports my channel, and it lets me know that you guys like these sort of honest and transparent personal finance videos. So comment down below, you guys, have you yourselves experienced lifestyle creep? If so, what did it look like for you? I really wanna know. I think that by breaking down the barrier and all of us sharing our stories, we can help each other in the long run because it's not just at our first job or our first raise. We are gonna be growing in our careers for the rest of our lives. We are gonna be increasing, decreasing, changing our salary. And it's important to talk about it and learn from the experiences and even the mistakes of others. So I recently got a raise at work. I got a raise, it was part of the annual performance evaluation cycle. Every year we get a raise at my company. This was my first year at this job and I am super, super grateful to have gotten a raise. Now, what to do when you get a raise? That is going to be the topic of this video along with lifestyle creep. So I'm going to be sharing with you guys my story of experiencing lifestyle creep as well as giving you guys some tips on how to avoid it and what are the best things to to do when you get a raise, when you get a salary increase, when you get a new job, how can you use this amazing, you know, achievement to better your personal finances and not get sucked into lifestyle creep and not hinder your own success in terms of personal finance? That was hard to get out of my mouth for some reason. So I thought I would give you guys the official definition of lifestyle creep before we jump into my story. So this says, lifestyle creep, according to Investopedia, occurs when an individual's standards of living improves as their discretionary income rises and former luxuries become new necessities. A hallmark of lifestyle creep is change in thinking and behavior that sees spending on non-essential items as a right rather than a choice. What an amazing definition. And we're gonna start this video off by telling you guys my story and experience with lifestyle creep. I seriously experienced it to like the 20th degree, like really, really high. So I wanna share my story with you guys and the lessons that I learned so that you don't make the same mistakes that I did. And I just think it's really important for us all to have healthy relationships with money and to be saving for our futures. You know, there's so much content online, including my own, okay? I am at, like, I am, I do this too, um, about spending, about flexing, about all this stuff, and I really try and find a balance. I'm the kind of person who likes to live my life with a lot of balance. I like to spend, you know, I'm sitting here wearing the most extravagant sweater in the world. Um, but, you know, I also really believe in financial independence, especially for women, financial literacy, and setting yourself up for success so that you can be an independent person and not be struggling financially. That's just not the kind of life I want to live and it's not the kind of life I would want you guys to live either. <clears throat> so <laughs> I, I did that. I did that noise and my dog was like... <laughs> So my story with lifestyle creep starts when I graduated university and I got my first job. So this is the situation that I was in. I graduated university and I had about $35,000 in student debt. I was living in an apartment that cost $450 a month. That was my half of the rent. Heat was included, hot water was included. It was like the dream situation. I lived with one other girl, her name was Camilla. We're still friends to this day. And the two of us lived in this apartment. Now, we always reflect that we don't know how we got so lucky with that apartment. It was a huge, beautiful apartment. It was so cheap. 
However, it was in a kind of sketchy part of town and it was on a really busy street, so it was really noisy. So I really didn't like living in that apartment. You know, I liked living with Camilla. I liked the way the apartment looked, but it just wasn't my ideal living situation. So I decided that after I graduated university, I was going to move out on my own. And there was a certain area in Montreal that I always wanted to live in. It's known for being a little bit more expensive, but I was determined I'm about to be a young professional and I needed to live in the young professional part of town. Now that's okay. And I think that that like upon reflecting, you know, it's totally fine that you want to spend your money to live in, you know, a cool part of town, a part of town that's going to make you happy. A lot of my friends live around here and I do think that was a really good decision. Now, where perhaps the mistake was is that I moved in by myself to a very expensive apartment. I moved into a beautiful loft where I still live um, and my rent costs $1,300. So I went from paying $450 a month to $1,350 a month. That is the biggest example of lifestyle creep that I can provide you with. A lot of the times we inflate our living expenses and this can be apartment, house, car, part of town, city, anything like that. Um, and we suddenly view it as a necessity. I can absolutely say that I think my apartment is a necessity. I think that having, I'm so fortunate, okay? I have a separate bedroom, I have a separate office, I have a separate living room, and I have a separate kitchen. And all of this has now become a necessity for me. Once you get used to a certain standard of living, it becomes extremely hard for you to downsize. So do I regret it? No. But could I have chosen to live somewhere else, somewhere cheaper, and perhaps not experience such a huge inflation right at the beginning of my career? Yes. So moving on. I got a job as a management consultant and along with this job came a very good salary. I can say it now, I was making $65,000 Canadian a year before taxes and I felt like that, I felt like I was rich. I felt like, I, oh my God, I'm making the sickest salary ever. I'm rich, I'm balling, like, let's go. I also felt that with my job title came a need to have a certain lifestyle. I felt like as a management consultant who makes $65,000 a year, I needed to go out for happy hours every week. I needed to Uber everywhere. I needed to have a Gucci bag. I needed to have all of these fancy things. Now those little things are also lifestyle creep. It doesn't just mean buying a BMW. Suddenly thinking that, you know, your bags from like, whatever store your cheap bags are not good enough you need to have designer bags that's lifestyle inflation right when you suddenly go from drinking cheap beer to expensive cocktails that's lifestyle inflation when you go from eating ramen noodles to like expensive takeout ramen every day that's lifestyle inflation or lifestyle creep the point of this video now Luckily, I had a friend when I was thinking about getting a Gucci bag who said to me, Zoe, you are so stupid if you buy this Gucci bag. You have debt. And if you walk around carrying a Gucci bag while having debt, you're just stupid. And thank God she said that to me. I give this example all the time because she really kicked me in the ass when I needed it. And rather than spend that money on a Gucci bag, I had received a signing bonus and I didn't know what to do with it. Rather than spend it on a Gucci bag, I put it towards my debt. So I was racking up all of these purchases. I was shopping all the time. I was going out all the time. I was living a really expensive lifestyle. I was making good money, like I said, but because of this lifestyle creep and my expensive ass apartment, I was living paycheck to paycheck. Guys, I feel that that is so pathetic to live paycheck to paycheck on a $65,000 salary, not because of any right, like real reason, not because I have a kid that I'm supporting, not because of anything, but just because I was being materialistic and greedy and experiencing lifestyle creep. There are people who support a family on less money than that. And I was barely able to just take care of myself on that salary. That's embarrassing. So that's a big thing, right? 
our salary doesn't define us and our job title doesn't define us. You get to choose how you want to be defined as your, like how yourself defines you. And so if you are trying to keep up with a certain salary or a certain job title, or maybe you make less money than your friends and you're trying to keep up with your friends, you will experience lifestyle creep and you will be going after these material things that in the end bring you no joy, bring you no value. And it's just such a shame. I wish I could go back and unspend on all of those clothes that I no longer wear, all of those drinks that I didn't even care to have. I just, I wish I could go back, but all I can do is share my story with you guys and learn my lessons moving forward. Now here's the thing, COVID hit and that completely changed the way I see things. Now, I still love clothes. I love fashion, I love clothing. It's how I like to express myself. Like I said, I'm sitting here in a freaking egg sweater, but that doesn't mean that I need to participate in going shopping every single week like I used to. I can choose pieces that I genuinely love and choose to spend on and have that balance without needing to spend like crazy. For me, my rent has become something that I'm really grateful for because being home all the time with COVID, I love my home and I love my space and I'm super, super grateful for it. So I don't think that was a mistake per se, but would I recommend to other people to do what I did? No. Here's what I would recommend. You need to reflect on the things that are important to you. Like I said, COVID completely changed the way I see things and food is no longer important to me. Like going out for food is no longer important for me. Going out for drinks is no longer important for me buying you know, a ton of clothes from Aritzia because all of my wardrobe had to be Aritzia is no longer important to me. What's important to me is my space and making my space beautiful. So I prioritize paying my rent and I see that as something that I intentionally spend on rather than just passively because I'm a management consultant and I deserve to live in a loft. No, I consciously, I work from home now. I, you know, I love being home and so I consciously put my money towards my rent. But knowing that I have a higher rent I need to cut back in other areas of my life. And now that's getting a little bit off topic. That's talking about budgeting, but just to go back to the lifestyle creep, you need to reflect on what's important for you. So when you receive a raise or when you get that first job or when you get that big salary bump, only spend on the things that are important. Don't worry about the Gucci bag if that's not important for you. Don't worry about a fancy car. Just think about what is important for you and prioritize spending on that and save the rest, you guys. Use the rest to pay off your debt. Use the rest to get ahead. Those little things that aren't important are not important and you're not gonna remember them in the long run. So don't waste your money on it. So here's the thing. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I just got a raise and it's really tempting to be like, oh my gosh, I just got a raise. Now I can go shopping, treat yourself, blah, blah, blah. But I had to take a step back and say, wait a minute, Zoe. I already experienced such an intense lifestyle creep that I cannot afford to raise my lifestyle any further. I live a really good lifestyle, I, I'll, I will say it. I have a beautiful home, I wear beautiful clothes, I have a beautiful dog, and I definitely live, I would say, a luxurious lifestyle and one that makes me very happy. But could I inflate it even more? Of course, there's always the next thing, and that's what's important to remember. Every time you inflate your lifestyle, there's always another level that you can achieve and you will never be happy unless you learn to be happy where you currently are. So when I got my new raise, you know, it wasn't a ton of money by any means, but I had to remind myself, hey, you already live the lifestyle that was your goal. Don't add a new goal. Don't inflate it even more. Just stay where you are. Be grateful where you are. And I think that's so, so important. And you don't need to wait till you're at this like really awesome spot in your expensive apartment to be grateful where you are. Being grateful at the lower, the lowest cost of living that you can live happily, truly happily and be grateful for, you will be better off. And don't go any higher than that unless you really, really value that and you really, really want that. That is, I truly believe, the key to getting ahead financially, to getting comfortable financially, is keep on raising your income, keep making more money. There is nothing wrong with making more money, but every time you make more money, save it. Save it for your goals and for the things that are really truly important to you. So you guys, let's talk about taxes. When I got my first job and I got my offer of employment saying I was gonna be making 65K, did I think about taxes? Did I budget for taxes? No, sir, no, ma'am. I 
didn't realize I'd lose half my paycheck. Well, not half, but I'd lose a huge chunk of my paycheck to taxes. So you need to keep that in mind when you get a raise or when you get a new job, you need to calculate what your actual paycheck is going to be after taxes and build your budget accordingly. That is so important. So when you get a raise and you're thinking, well, whoops, I got a raise, I can get a car now. First of all, calculate it after taxes. How much is your raise actually going to be? So let's say you got a $5,000 raise. That's amazing, congratulations. But at the end of the day, that's $5,000 over a year. That's not $5,000 directly in your pocket. And a lot of the times we hear these numbers and we think that that money is going directly into our pocket when it's not. It is going to be broken up over you know, monthly, bi-monthly, whatever your pay periods are. That's how that $5,000 is going to be broken up after taxes. So you need to keep that in mind as well before adding anything onto your life what new number am I getting? Then think, do I really want to spend this extra 200 bucks a month because that's probably what it's going to come out to be? Or can I save this 200 bucks a month and look how much money I'm going to have at the end of the year and I'm going to be so grateful for that. I genuinely think that is the way to go. That is how I'm going to be doing it with my new raise and that feels pretty damn good. Here's the other thing. There flex culture. It's all around us. Like I said, I even participate in it. I've got a haul that went up probably earlier this month where I got a whole bunch of clothes sent to me and that's really, really awesome, right? And I'm so happy to be having these clothes, taking pictures in them. I'm super grateful for it. I love it. But that doesn't mean that the people watching that video need to drop everything they're doing and go buy a bunch of clothes. Sometimes we have to remember that the content we're looking at is just for fun. And it doesn't mean that just because one person has a designer bag or got a whole bunch of new clothes that we need that too. We have to remember, like I said, what is important to us and tune out the noise and tune out the flex culture. And just, you know, remember that we don't need to drop everything we're doing to look like this person or to act like this person or to have a lifestyle like this person. Let it be what it is, you know, probably someone on the internet who you don't know in real life, or maybe you do, and leave it at that. A lot of the times, you know, we see these people flexing, but we don't know the truth about their story. I'm sure there was people who looked at me when I was, you know, working my old job and like partying all the time, whatever, and were like, wow, Zoe lives such a cool life. Like, look at all her clothes, they're from Aritzia. Look, she's always out clubbing, she's always out partying. But they don't know that I'm in debt and that I'm living paycheck to paycheck. And when you like turn off the lights and you think of it that way, oh, well, it's not so glamorous anymore. So I really encourage you guys to keep a discerning eye on things, keep a critical eye on things, and always think about the other side of it. And just think about it at the end of the day. Would I rather have this new material item or would I rather save for my future? It's up to you. So you guys, that's my video on lifestyle creep. I hope this was helpful. This is a topic I could talk about forever. So let me know if you want more videos like this. I really, really hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments, like I said, if you have experienced lifestyle creep, I wanna know, I wanna read about it. And with that being said, I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.